This is the news load. Hello, Daniel Yukis. How are you today? What's up? Good. How are you doing? I'm amazing. I'm amazing. So where are you right now? Well, I'm not on a beach. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> not on oceanfront property. Although I guess I could have changed this. Made it look like I was in space or something. Uh, I'm in prison, actually. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I am back home for however many hours or whatever it is. I just, I actually just got back from Hawaii and I'm headed out again in a couple days. But I'm uh, back home in uh, L.A., Los you don't Angeles. Man, I, uh, I was see-through um, before all of this, so this is very tan for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You should well, see I mean, my feet. They're not they're not as dark. Let me see your feet. <laughs> no, then I gotta take my shoes, my socks. I, it's, you it's can make thing. a lot of money by showing pictures of your home. <laughs> I know, and you're asking me to do it for free right here. This is <laughs> absurd. <laughs> so you probably have a lot of hecklers at your show, eh? Um uh, yeah, yes, but I feel like um when people say the word heckler, they always think of like this malicious, like person who just wants to ruin your life and they're angry at you and they hate you and they want want bad things for you. But I feel like the the worst is always the people who are nice and think they're helping and they're just yelling things because it's so hard to put a it's it's so much easier to put a person down when they're, you know, like an ass i guess i don't know it, it, but but w when they're like a nice person and they think they're helping and then you put them down and now the crowd hates you because you're like whoa this person was having a good time and then you're like yeah but you're ruining you know what i mean it's just so much harder the nice ones it's the nice ones i hate you know <laughs> so i so i hate to be a demanding princess but you have a spider bit yeah oh yeah do you mind Doing it here, it's not going to be as good. Yes, I, uh, I, I, I disagree. I think any word coming out of your mouth that has to do with that spider bit would be brilliant. Please share with my audience. <laughs> I just, I mean, first off, it's not a bit, it's my life. I am terrified of spiders. Um, I freak out. I'll, I'll use anything to kill a spider. No joke, I once killed a spider by spraying it with Febreze. <laughs> just until it drowned. I didn't think the spider cared. He's just like, oh, fresh to death. I hate it. I especially, I hate when you go into your own house and you see a spider on the wall in your room. It's like it's like running into an ex at a party. You're just like, how'd you get in here? I thought I got rid of you. You're bigger than I remembered. It's scary. <laughs> that's That's some of it. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's brilliant. You're right. It's better on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I guess I'll uh, should just stick to feet pictures or whatever. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm sorry. Um, are are you getting TikTok famous? Uh I've had some like decent views on TikTok. Um, never done any of the like viral five million views videos or anything like that. But randomly, I've been doing TikTok lives and. Um, as weird as it sounds, or as weird as it is, um, I will go in front of a screen or a, a background that looks, um, well, exactly like this, and I'll just <laughs> go live, and I'll just do a set, whether it's 10 minutes or 20 minutes, and I try out a bunch of new stuff and see people's reactions in the chat, and they can react with emojis live, or they'll say things, and um, it's been a lot of fun. I recorded my last album with a lot of that, especially during the pandemic, when all that happened, I um, started doing those TikTok lives and I, <laughs> excuse me, get like a thousand people watching sometimes. And no, um, I feel that Jimmy yeah. Allen has really sort of started the whole, it's okay to talk from home if you can't get out. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's great too, with the like, I mean, beforehand, if the, you know, if I had like a Monday night off because there's no like big shows or anything, uh, it's so much easier just to instead of going to, you know, hitting up a show and doing a guest spot or going to some open mic where you never know if there's going to be three people in the crowd, just to be able to go from here in my house 
on tick or wherever I am uh, on TikTok and perform for like a thousand strangers and try out a bunch of new stuff. Like it's, yeah, it's been super helpful. And honestly, one of the, like, one of the best things to come out of the pandemic for me at least. So. Yeah. Is to be able to adapt and enlarge our audience and not just like follow the seventies rule of, okay, you gotta, you gotta work the clubs and you gotta, you know, you know, deal with the, the, the seniors and they deserve our respect and we have to go get them a beer or whatever you need to do. Yeah. I'll be their assistant for a year and, you know, massage their corns or whatever is required in 1970s Hollywood. Yeah. No longer the option, you know? And, and <laughs> I think one of the biggest things that's hit, happened in um, the internet is, is, the porn industry has just exploded. It's just been a beautiful thing. Uh, you, the phones are getting bigger and every app, like I think Pornhub, it took five days to reach 20 million hits or something like that. Like it's just, it's very exciting. The difference from the seventies live shows to being live on camera from the comforts of your own home. Yeah. Well, people, people might still be uh, massaging seniors corns on Pornhub somewhere on there but um well I know Polly Shore is probably our- having his corns run right now you know with <laughs> his with his club and everything like Polly Shore yeah. he is generations of of comedy club owners he knows the drill <laughs> yeah you know it's funny my first this is maybe off the topic of where you wanted to go but um when I was I was always a little bitter when I first started out with the comedy store in LA because they were the only club um, I started when I was 17. By the time I uh, was down in LA, I was 18. But some of the comedy clubs, you had to be 21 to go inside. And nobody you minded. Come to if Canada. You... You, you can be 18 in Canada. <laughs> oh, dang. Well, it was a long way from Fresno, where I, Fresno, California, where I started. Hey, and every ticket is a, is a ticket to ride. <laughs> <laughs> LA was a little closer for me at the time. But when I came down here, every, everybody was fine if you were under 21, as long as you were, if you were on the show. But the comedy store, they were the only ones who uh, bothered me about it. And uh, they would make me wait outside and uh and then somebody would yell like you're on and then i would run on stage and i always they get raided every weekend because it's full of cocaine (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah there's so many worse things though going on in that place and yet they're like (laughs) but i have somebody you gotta be old enough to play with (laughs) big boys (laughs) yeah it's like hey if we just pretend like we're following one rule people are just gonna assume we're following all of them so yeah one one, in in quebec here in canada you can get a six pack of beer at the gas station when you're 18 and a lottery ticket and then go join the army eh (laughs) i think you can still do that in iowa i just don't know if it's legal but uh it's legal in canada (laughs) Um, but yeah, at the comedy store, so uh, even though, you know, California looks a lot like your background for most of the year, um, it does get a little cold in the, the winter time and, uh, it was, you know, not, nothing crazy, but in Celsius, how cold is it? (laughs) Oh, I honestly, I don't know Celsius. So I, I couldn't, I couldn't even guess, but in Fahrenheit, um, it'll get in the thirties at night, sometimes in the twenties. Um, I mean, that's around freezing. So around zero, I guess. What is Um, 30 Fahrenheit? I don't even know. 30. Yeah. Well, 32 is freezing, so I guess it'd be zero. Celsius to Fahrenheit. Celsius. I'll open a tab. I'll Google it. Oh, this is like official. 30 to 6, so I want... (laughs) I'm dying to know, because I'm I'm such a... I'm very silly. I... So it's minus one. So yeah, it's zero. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, it gets... Yeah, it gets it's a little chilly sometimes. I mean, not all the time, but it gets that way. And this was one of those nights, and I was outside of the comedy store, freezing. I mean, I'm built like this is this is actual size. Stand up, Stand up. show us how. <laughs> this is. You this are- is. I mean, don't. I got horizontal stripes on, so just imagine it's a lot smaller without the shirt. But can you, can you play um, uh, the the whatever the the jingles on your ribs, like in in Family Guy? <laughs> Not yet. I'm sure uh, I'll have to learn that and make that uh, a video along with the feet pics. And uh, if you if you if you if you skip lunch, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I um, 
but yeah, so this was a cold night and I was outside freezing and Polly Shore walks up next to me. And I'm like, oh, man, if anyone's going to let me, if anyone's going to see, hey, this guy is freezing, he's on stage, I, I basically own this club, he can get me in, right? So he, like, lights up a cigarette, and he's next to me, and he's like, you going on stage tonight? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, but I, uh, I'm not 21, so they won't let me in uh, <laughs> until I go on stage. And he just goes, oh, yeah. And then he puts out the cigarette and walks away. And I was like, oh, it was my only interaction ever with Polly Shore, but I'm still bitter. About it, so. Well, my interaction was him in Encino Man, and he was brilliant. <laughs> I loved him in Bible. Yeah. I loved him in In the Army Now. I love I love most things that Polly Shore has done, but uh, <laughs> I never met him. So you you are welcome to be cold and grumpy in in, <laughs> yeah. in minus one degree temperatures and and i forgive you but honey wear a jacket i don't mean to mother you but i did i i think i probably had a jacket on i maybe i didn't i don't remember was it denim because canadians we love our denim it was not denim that much i do know that is the rule it is Okay. Okay. Let me tell you about the Canadian tuxedo. So you have the jeans, so you are comfortable and you can flow and you can, you can cut down a tree and you can, you know, save the planet in jeans. But then when you bring the jean jacket, you can tie it around your waist and look cool like you're in Nirvana, or you can <laughs> wear it around your arms and be warm. I feel like you need, they need to make like a jean fanny pack too, just to add to the like, I feel like if I was going to go all denim out, I'd denim everything. I'd have like well, a denim hat, denim shoes. Oh, yeah. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? So you're going to Britney Spears it and, and Justin Timberlake, eh? Just, just yeah, exactly. Denim. denim. Denim like a jean. Denim socks, denim boxers, do it all. Jeggings. Jeggings. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, fabulous. So so I do a bit about men's health. November was big on men's health and discussing, you know, uh, mental health and um, prostate health. Um, it is an issue. Uh, so for science, the world wants to know, uh, what kind of underwear do you wear? Oh, well, um, boxers. Um... I'm a boxers guy. I uh, loose, and, loose and flowy guy. Eh? You need you need the room. I will say, I don't normally do this because I've I've acted in a lot of commercials, um, like national commercials, and I don't normally. It's just it's just a job. It's just money. It is what it is. It's fun to see all that stuff. But there was one commercial that um, not only like did it pay a lot of money, but um, there's this whole issue with like companies going non-union versus union, and and union pays a lot more, and some of the biggest companies. In the world, I've done commercials for Google, Amazon, uh, non-union, kind of like shame on kind of thing. Um, but it was one company that went union that I didn't feel like happy with the union. And they did, and they paid a lot of money, and they treated me well, and that was Fruit of the Loom. So any chance I have to buy Fruit of the Loom underwear, I do it. Well, I'll have you know, the former tour of London, uh, first, I believe the first black politician in London that wears Fruit of the Looms as well. So I knew I, picked, I knew I made the right choice. And he wrote a book about prostate health, and he wears Fruit of the Loom. <laughs> this is one of the things that I said. Would you like to learn about testicular torsion? Well, I don't know a lot about it already, but um, no, I, don't. I, uh, I didn't have a plan for that, but I was like, I was like, I'll think of something, and I definitely didn't. So <laughs> here we are. But does this have to do with the other that you're talking about? Or? No, it's another gentleman. Oh, okay. Does he know you're sharing this everything? Yes, we have a whole article about it. Oh, well, sure, go ahead. Well, okay, imagine you're playing, and your, your, your testicles twist. Yeah. In an ideal situation, they can untwist. Does this only happen by bicycling? No, it can be any physical exertion oh. whatsoever. Why, why is that a thing? Well... I guess because there's a weird, awkwardly shaped heat, maybe. And all it has to do with um, testicular um, sagging, you know, like some are tight and some are not. I feel like that would happen a lot to people while they were like running or something. Yes, yes, I can imagine. Yeah. I, I can only imagine. The only thing that I think I can do is get one of those bumper sticker things, the bumper things and tape them to myself. But I don't like tape. <laughs> Just in general, or <laughs> I? Uh, well, I've never seen any. Um, I've never. What would you call it? testicular torsion? Tor torsion. I've. Uh, I've never seen any 
truck nuts have that problem. Um, do you guys have those out there? People with like the nuts on their truck? This is what I was thinking if I wanted to have an understanding of how it could twist in a running situation. But again, some of them look as big as cow nuts. <laughs> I've never thought about it before, but I guess you're right. Well, I have to admit, I've seen two different sizes of testicles in my life. <laughs> I'm glad someone's keeping track. And one was saggy and one was not. <laughs> so I assume it's like the rainbow on the testicle. Yeah. The Torsion, testicle rainbow. Tension, twisting, you know, like, like problems. Basically what happens, it can but sometimes it's in the hospital with a lot of people playing balls. And is that surgery or what is that? Yeah, yeah, they gotta oh. go in and they gotta untwist the balls and you could lose them. Oh man. So your yeah. under is important. <laughs> yes. Well, you need, you need Brutal support. Loom's done me good so far. So you need support, you need cuppage, you need, you don't let them flop around too much because they could twist and then you could be very upset. Well, I don't like it too tight either because that's, I had to, I did a commercial once where I had to wear a thong, like a man thong, oh. and that was not fun. Was it a porno? No, I, uh, well, you would have thought by the, it was a, a Dollar Shave Club. Ah. Uh, and uh, you, so, it was, yeah. I it was like, like them. I like yeah. them very much. Shout out to Dollar Shave Club. <laughs> and they, I had to appear naked. In the th I was I was the guy. My official role was guy seeing how high he can pee in the shower, and uh, so obviously it was blurred. But if it's not, yeah, you know, it, it's blurred. But in in real life, they wanted me to have the least amount of clothing as possible so that they could blur it and it looks like I'm actually in the shower. Daniel, yeah. Did you pee or did you use a hose? Oh, I used a hose. Which was, um, that probably made it weirder. I think I would have rather just peed. It was honestly one of the weirdest experiences of my life. I was, uh, it was the first time I ever got to film at the Universal Studios back lot. <laughs> and uh, it was, I, I had always dreamed of being able to like do, some, do something in there. Because there's a theme park there and, and the back lot is just really cool. And it cut, cut to me now a few years ago filming this commercial where I'm in a, on a, fil a fake the film set of a bathroom where it's not a real shower. So it's freezing cold water. I'm talking zero degrees Celsius type stuff uh, or one degree Celsius. Cause it wasn't frozen. So at least one, but it was still cold. And um, <laughs> yeah. And I had a hose with fake pee in it and there's just pee all over the walls. There's pee everywhere. I'm in a thong. Was it yellow? Was it, yellow? Was it like, was it like brisk iced tea or something? Like what did they it was use? pretty orange? Cause they needed to like show up on, like on camera. It looks natural, it like, but it, it was like McDonald's happy juice. It was pretty dark. Yeah. It was like this, this character needs more uh, water in his life or he's going to get kidney stones real soon. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but it, on camera, it looked great. It looked real. And uh, um, yeah. So I was in a thong with fake pee on the wall, freezing. And I was like, man, I never thought this would be my first time getting filmed in Universal Studios back. But that's my life. Daniel. Oh my God. I'm crying. This is so funny. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So <laughs> I'm going to let you go soon, but I'd love to know, um, <laughs> If your fans were to send you Christmas presents, what would you like for Christmas? Oh, man. Well, first off, I'd like them to not know my address. Uh, that's not you have a P.O. Lot. box? Like I have a P.O. box. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So What's I got P.O. Box? box. I don't have, but in, hypothetically in this situation, I don't have a real, I don't have a P.O. box. I should, because that'd be nice with, to get. With pictures of your feet that can be mailed from. <laughs> exactly. Or for a little more. Um, <laughs> or, or, or. Or thong peeing brie shots, you know, with the big yeah. butt. Yeah. I hope you guys think about that next time you shave with one of those. Um, <laughs> with Dollar Shave Club? I got it. Yeah. Commercial. Oh, my God. I'm good. <laughs> I don't know if it's still, I don't know if you can find it anymore. I'll have to look it up. But. Um, you got censored. 
you got you got shut down. <laughs> yeah, you know what's funny? They made me do another part, like a more basic, because there's a lot of different scenes in the commercial, and they, they also, the person with two characters, had me do a separate scene where I was just trying to get all the toothpaste out of a toothpaste thing, and I couldn't do it, and I'm like stamping on it. And I was like, why am I doing both? Am I in the commercial twice? And they said, well, we're not, a, we're talking to our lawyers about whether or not we can use that first shot of you. So while we're figuring that out, just in case, we're going to have you do this one instead. So that's smart. Hey, man, two is one and one is none. Yeah. And what's <laughs> funny is I, it did air. I did see the one with the peeing air, but um, it was only online. And the one that I saw on TV was me with the toothpaste. So was, there's was probably some weird legal thing there. And also in the Minneapolis airport, excuse me, they had a Dollar Shave like um, vending machine, basically, that you can I don't know, get razor. You're traveling and needed one. And on the side of it was this giant size, screen. Right? <laughs> what's that? Or you're suicidal. I need a razor. <laughs> yeah. Suicidal in, your, in the Minneapolis airport. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, they, uh, they had a giant screen playing the commercial. And I was like, oh, dear God, please don't be the peeing one. Like, it's that's so weird for me. And it wasn't. It was the toothpaste one. So all I know is they aired the peeing one online. But anyway. Shut down after Bill Cosby, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh, we don't need any, we don't need any, 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 what did they call it? Any triggers? <laughs> yeah. So um, if we were to send you a Christmas present, how can we do this? Just go oh, I don't know. Talk to your... I mean, honestly, the greatest gift, and this sounds cheesy and stupid and like a lame answer, but it's, it's just totally real, is that like likes and views and shares, sharing videos of like how it goes so far. Like, honestly, that sounds like a stupid gift, but like it's a free thing that you could do for comedians. And when you share... A video like a kind of like a random video of me with my family or something but like me doing comedy like a comedy bit it's typically the spider joke it's my the favorite. spider one is a great so, one yes so for christmas if someone could share your spider bit on instagram yes. on facebook on the tiktok on pinterest on linkedin what else are you on um yeah, you said TikTok, Instagram. Instagram is a big Twitter, one for videos. Twitter, are you tweeting still? I'm on, I'm on Twitter. Yeah, I don't use it as much for videos, but um, what about Elon Musk? Like he's doing some things, you know? Don't you want to be in a space program? Come on. <laughs> I do. I do like space actually, but I well, I'll post random. I never want to like give out too many jokes on Twitter because I'm like I'd rather people come see me live, but um, I do. I tweet some things here and there. And but yeah, share stuff. It goes a long way. Hopefully you get the movie gig and, you know, somebody uh, while you're walking with your daughters down the street, you're like Bob Saget and, you know, somebody, you know, like, yeah, and you don't suck dick for Coke and then drive by, you know, <laughs> just being forever timeless. <laughs> yeah, well, more likely they'll be like, isn't that a guy from that uh, peeing in the shower commercial? Uh. <laughs> what we do for money, eh? eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't get paid so, for that. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, what's that? So I guess the, the final question I'd love to ask is, Bono from U2 says that laughter is how people see freedom. What do you think about that? Mm. Um, I mean, tell that to people in prison. I uh, No, I, I, uh, let's see. Um, I don't know if freedom is the word that I would use, but um, I mean, it's definitely... Um, a good way to know you're not like a serial killer, right? If you're not laughing at anything, you're, you know, you probably have some issues. Um, you, might be, you might be dead inside. <laughs> yeah. Or somebody else on your behalf. Um, it's a, it's a fascinating um, research where they're saying that children laugh 400 a day times a day and adults only laugh four times a day. Oh, wow. Four times that had to have changed with like TikTok, you know what I mean? Because people will just scroll sometimes, you know, and just laugh for like hours. But, but Daniel, I will just snort out of my nose, I won't mm. laugh like what you just did for oh, me. Oh, I see. With the, with the shower thing, I cried, you know, it was so funny. And you just did that sitting there giving that gift to me. What you have, your talent, and your abilities is. Greatly appreciated, even all the way up in cold Canada. <laughs> well, it looks very warm there, um, but I, I appreciate wish, that. I wish, I wish. <laughs> but um, Daniel, I can't thank you enough. Um, if I could request one last thing for you to say it loud, say it proud. I love Newsload. I love Newsload. <laughs> 
Thank you so much, Daniel. And I hope you have the most beautiful day. Where Where are you headed Thank next you. next week? Kind of thing. So, like, let's say um, September fourteenth. Yeah, after I get back from Seattle, I will be headed to um, beautiful um, Fresno, California, doing some shows there. I then go on a cruise to the Bahamas, performing on the Carnival uh, Dream, uh, two back-to-back cruises. If you happen to be on that, say hello. And to kick off the new year, first weekend in January, uh, is it the first weekend? It's the 6th, 7th, or 7th, 8th, something like that. It's the first weekend in January. That's not New Year's. Um, I will be in uh, Tucson, Arizona. If you happen to be there, it's cold, so you might be there trying to beat the cold weather. Um, oh, how cold be in the desert. is it, Daniel? In, in no, I mean, it's cold, Tucson. and you might you might want to go to Arizona to beat the cold because it's much hotter there. Oh, yeah. Um, so, then uh, you see me headline Laughs Comedy Club there that first weekend. Well, Daniel, thank you so much. I can't wait to actually meet you in person someday, but uh, I wish you yeah. all the best of luck. And I, I recommend that you go back to Polly Shore and ask him to to let you in. <laughs> I will try. Next time I see him, I'll definitely mention it. Hey, man, can you let me in now? I'm old enough. I'm old enough. <laughs> yeah. They got to follow the rules, man. The cops show up every weekend. Yeah. Well, to be fair, I haven't seen any articles come out where they... Um, you know, got busted for having 19 year olds inside or anything. So to be fair, yes, the 19 year olds have to be carded really. And like, they have to scratch the license and they have to <laughs> put it up to the light and make sure that, cause you know, when I was 15, uh, we had all ages dances. So they knew that we were underage, so it was totally fine, but they just, we had an X on our hand. So we, couldn't uh, they, they, they marked us. You know, like cattle. No, nope, this one yeah. can't have a drink. <laughs> but then you well, sneak in. You sneak in the rum and the coke. You know, you, you yeah, you, yeah. The festival fun. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the '90s for me. Unfortunately, I'm dating myself. <laughs> I was uh, you was born at some point in the '90s. What What year were you born? I was actually born in '90, so. 97? 90. No, 90. 1990. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I was 11, um, so I was in grade four with uh, Miss Miss Smybert. She would bake cakes, and it was wonderful. Who was your grade four teacher? Um, uh, It was Miss... Uh, it would have been Miss Bell. Miss Bell? Miss, was she nice? Yeah. Was she fourth grade? Or, yeah, she was fourth grade. Miss C. Bell. We had several Bells that weren't related. She was, we, we call her Miss C. Bell. And she told me, I I just remember her saying at one point, I don't know why this stuck with me, but she came up to me one day in class and kind of whispered it. She's like, you are a very, um, how'd she put it? She said, you're a very like responsible or well-mannered child and i just want to say kudos to your parents tell them that next time you see <laughs> and you know what and i was like that is, okay that is that's a real issue because she is probably a headache with 12 yeah. other boys and you were a good boy and she needed to let you know that and I, did you like that did you appreciate that i was just like oh okay thanks but i didn't really like i didn't you know i was fourth grade i was like okay i guess i behave and stuff i don't know good for you good for you yeah well, I want to thank your parents as well for raising hey. a hilarious young man born uh, in 1990. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I wish you a beautiful evening, and I want to thank you so much for being on the news load today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, happy holidays. Happy holidays. This is the news load.